Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome to sort of part four of the newbie guide. So last we've covered feeder fishing and float fishing. Um, we're going to go on a little bit now. I'm level 15. I've done well. I've caught some fish. I've bagged up, as the, you know, the experts say. Um, and I'll show you the sort of bits of equipment that we've bought and stuff like this. And I'm now going to sort of talk you through how to do spin fishing. Now, spin fishing, spinnering, spinnering is... It's a different beast and I think it's probably the hardest to sort of learn and just get the basics of when you're new to fish. You understand a float and when it goes down you've probably got a bite. You understand a feeder when it bends around and a little bell goes, you've got a fish. But spinning's a little bit different. So let's do some spinnerage and I've called it like 17 different things at this point. So as you can see, this is what my I, I would recommend as your basic setup once you get going. So remember in the last episode, we talked about feeder fishing and we bought, saved up, bought the Deserti and the 350 11 pound line. The next rod I bought was identical. Another exactly the same thing, another Deserti because float fishing is quite hands-on. You know, you've got to be looking at your float, you've got to be holding it. You can get the occasional fish when the rod is placed, but you're generally speaking just waiting for the bite and going for it. Spin, spinning is, I, I don't want to say spin fishing, spinnering. Um, spinning is very hands-on as well. You're literally all the time on the reel. So what you don't want to do is be float fishing and spinning because it's hard to keep track of the two things. You're, you need to be hands-on at both. So... To get silver and to get more experience, the best thing, even if you don't plan to be feeder fishing later on, let's say later on you just want to be a float fisherman or you just want to be a spin fisherman, then you still want to be doing getting two of these early feeder rods because that you can fish with three rods. So you can do two feeder rods and float fish or two feeder rods and spin fish. So it's perfect. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk you through spinning and the very basics when you first get the rod and I'll show you my setup for the rod as well. And then also I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about float fishing because there's a few other bits I want to cover and sort of basics and stuff that I sort of missed out previously and stuff. So we're back at the lovely Mosquito. It's a really good lake for trying out any new technique because most stuff works. There's plenty of fish in it. So let me take you through my spinning rod first. So we've got the Corona S66H which is a decent little rod. I I think it's the cheapest rod. It's got 5.5k load capacity. Now, as I can't remember how much detail I went into, I'm just going to cover this again. Load capacity is basically how much weight this rod can handle. So 5.5kg. You then want to make sure that your line is the, pretty much the same or slightly less than. So as you can see, my line here is 5kg. What that means is that if I caught jaws, my line would break earlier than my rod, which is much more preferable. And same with the reel. My reel was 5.5, so they match up perfectly. So the weakest point of my rod here it is my line, which is, which is perfect, you see? So that's what you want to make sure. So basically I've gone with the same reel as we did on the feeder fishing. You can even decide if, if, you're, if you just want to try spin fishing is get this rod. It's, I think it's, it's one of the cheapest. It might be the cheapest rod, but it's perfect for newbies. Um, it's just hit eye, go into the kit, take off the reel off the feeder rod and put it on the spinner rod, so just if you want to try it out. Same with the line. The thing you must have, remember, when we're, spin, when we're going spin fishing, spinning, oh, why do I call it? It just doesn't come out naturally. When, I'm, when you want to go spinning, you want, you're going after predator fish. At first, you're mainly going after perch and pike, and they both have teeth. So what you need to buy is a leader, a metal leader. It's, it's, you have to have one because otherwise the fish will bite through your line and you'll keep losing your spinner. So if we look in the tackle shop here, we go to leaders. Um, you want a steel one. This, this is perfectly fine to start off with. It's got 6 kg break, breakage and it's only 120. Perfectly fine. Grab that. Make sure you equip it. So you, you put it in the spinner slot. Obviously in the loose. The, the leader. The leader spot. But it has to be there. It's very important. Then we talk about spinner. So when you go to the tackle shop and you go on um, lead, uh, not leaders because that would be a different thing entirely. Lures. You only have access to spinning first. So only have access to these this bunch of lures. Um, once you level it up past a certain degree you go on to spoons wobblers i won't be covering those because i'm no expert but what i might do is i've got a couple of friends that are really into this sort of fishing so i might get them to do a, a more advanced guide on once you open up spoons and then wobblers and then 
top water wobblers and jerk baits and soft plastic lures and wacky wacky worms. Um, I don't know what even the level is. It's probably quite high. That's not that wacky, is it, that worm? So you need to be able to do jigging for the worms. No, they're, they're the least wacky worms I've ever seen. Oh, that one's quite wacky. That just looks like a bit of metal or straw. Um, so, but with spinning... And I say this, I get asked these questions a lot. What bait shall I use for feeder fishing? What bait shall I use for, what depth shall I use for float fishing? What shall I, all these sort of things. And yes, there is basics to it, but experiment. Try something. If it doesn't work, change it. Whether it's the spot you're fishing or the bait you're using or the depth you're fishing at. And the same goes for spinners. What I would recommend is you start with a very basic one. I think you'd get maybe this one as the basic, which is perfectly good. All good. Um, but what you want to do is just have a couple. So, so the very basics of spinning is that if it's a bright day, you want to use a bright reflective lure, a spinner. When it's a cloudy day or it's just getting into evening, you want to use a darker spinner. And that's the basics. But to be honest, I kind of just grab maybe three or four different shapes, different colours, because each one of these has a various different colours. There's a darker one here, but you can use the same thing. This one actually I quite enjoy as well. Um, I'll show you the ones I've got currently. So the one I've got on my rod currently, I treat. I just treated myself um, to this one, an Aquila. I think it's like 27 silver. It's quite expensive. You don't need to get that straight away. Stick with the cheaper ones. And I've got like a brighter version of this. This one I really like, and the Dragonfly st uh, Stream I really like. And they're various different weights. So that's the cut. So you'll notice that when you're trying to cast out. So once you've chosen a couple, and like I said, experiment with it. There's so many that you can find a, a fruity little gem, and uh, that no one else is talking about. So we're on mosquito, and I think the biggest thing with spinning is the location and the spinner you're using. I think location is by far the most important. There's no point fishing anywhere where there's no fish, right? We are fishing for perch. Initially, we are fishing for perch and pike. Both are ambush sight predators. Sight meaning they use their eyes, just in case you're stupid and didn't realize that. Um, <laughs> but also that means is that generally they're only really caught in the daytime. You can occasionally catch one on the spinner in the nighttime. But to be honest, I would just cast that float. Even if you're spin fishing, you know, pack it up when it gets dark. Wait until morning. Do a bit of, you know, uh, float fishing at night or something like that. And um, totally, totally gone off, off my track. Um, so, yeah, so they, but they are ambush predators. And this means they don't just, pike and perch, don't just sort of swim around, you know, having a merry old time. What they like is all this green shit in the water. Big, heavy, overhanging logs, branches, the different lily pads, these grasses and all this stuff. They love those features because they hide in them, wait for a little poor little roach to swim by and then gobble it up. So this spot, I'll show you on the map, just so you know, it's in D8, or map coordinates in the bottom right there, 4642, is my favourite spot of mosquito for spin fishing, because as you can see, right in front of us, we've got this nice log, we've got some lilies, some grasses all along the side, a nice patch of grass here, some more lilies, all is good. So we're going to equip our <coughs> rodage, and here it is. Yippee! So before we cast out, there's two things we need to talk about. One is the drag or the, I don't know what you can't remember it in they call, what do they even call it in this game? I always forget, because I just know it as drag. The friction break, which is how much the fish has to pull before you let line out. So I set that <clears throat> to about 20 on this setup. If you're using a different setup, go and check what you're safe with. You know, it's different for every setup and stuff like that, what you're happy with. And the other thing you need to hold R, and this is the retrieval speed. Now we want this nice and low because this, what we're doing, like I said, this is very active, is that we are casting out, pretty much always give it, unless you're fishing in an individual spot, give it the full beans with the shift click, right? Lobbing it out as far as we can, right? And then all you're doing, rod tip nice and low, but not straight as to where you cast. We, don't, we never want straight rods. So just at the angle there, and we're reeling in. Okay, at speed 10. You can, you can, this is one of the other things you can change. You could try slower or faster if you're not catching. Try a different spinner, try a different spot. So, have we caught a fish already? Okay, I know that's quite impressive, but oh my god, it's the world's smallest perch. Okay, yeah, don't bite for a minute, fish, please. I'm just that good. I can't not catch. What I would say about snags in this game, I'll, I'll try, if I can, to get snagged. 
because it's an often thing that I see people breaking their lines and stuff and you really don't need to do it. And also don't worry about casting into these weeds. In real life, you wouldn't be, you probably wouldn't be casting a spinner over the top of this grass because it's just going to get snagged. In this, it's perfect place to fish. So we're wheeling in slowly. I'm just holding down the left mouse button. That's all I'm doing. I'm waiting for the fish. Most of the time, they will hook themselves because at the end of the spinner, is a big treble hook, meaning three hooks in one pointing off and they grab the spinner and they'll take it with them and uh, uh, another thing to really emphasize is as you can see my lines coming in here don't get to this point when you're close in and go okay i'll have to cast that again always go to the very edge because <laughs> as you can see what a lot of the time what will happen is these pipe perch and pike will follow the spinner and jump on it at the last minute so always keep the rod tip down always reel in until you cannot reel in anymore to get these fish because you quite and always watch the rod tip because you'll see the fish coming for it at the end I, the first time it happened was a big perch and i actually did a little bit of we came out gotta be honest um so make sure don't sort of go okay it's close enough right start reeling in faster or lift the rod tip up because these this little spot here is where you'll get a lot of your bites because the fish will follow it in and what you want to do in this spot particularly is we're basically just sort of spreading it out so we can cast over here see don't be afraid of casting what will look like would be a horrible cast that's a perfect cast and we're reeling in you can strike a little bit i wouldn't strike with the right mouse, right mouse button right i i think that's just nuts most of the time the fish will hook themselves what sometimes i'll do is just go let's say the line suddenly what you're watching is the bottom bar as you can see there's no tension on the line at the moment because i'm just reeling in with nothing on it but when a fish gets it it will suddenly expand maybe just a little flick just to make sure you can set the hook but i really don't see a massive need in sort of doing a big strike like a crazy person you know we're not hooking into jaws here people and because they're big fat treble hooks they will they will hook themselves a lot of the time and you'll also get fish get away they'll they'll grab what will happen what happens in real life is occasionally the fish will grab from sideways the spinner the shiny metal bit that's spinning around and you'll feel the tension but it won't hook itself and that happens as well so don't panic you'll always lose fish it's like i often get asked oh i keep missing the bites on the float or the fish keep getting away or stuff like that there's things you can do you know make sure the floats right under or buy better hooks to stop yourself from losing so many fish but you it's fishing at the end of the day you're gonna lose fish right so we're gonna chuck out this silver one once more and then it's getting a bit cloudy now so we might switch to the other more darker one see how that goes but the key is experimentation same with walking around the lake if it looks like it's got fishies chuck a rod in and see don't chuck the rod in cast that you the, the chucking the rod in would just be a mistake um but let's let's try the let's go uh, reel this one in and we'll try the darker one <clears throat> and i guarantee after like a a few hours of this you will like get a favorite like for for the longest time this was my favorite this dragonfly original is a great little starting one so we're gonna luz it full beans again just on the edge of the grasses and we're gonna bring it in and see what we can get and like i say and also fish move so you might come to this spot one day and you'll catch 20 perch in half an hour and you'll be thinking fucking hell i've found the best spot in the world lads i'm the best fisherman there has ever been i am the next john wilson but for you old people there um and then the next day you go there there's nothing you're not doing anything wrong the fish migrate they move depending on weather conditions they go oh just there you go right at the tip again they, they followed it in he grabbed it he's having a field day now we're catching a few small perch here but we i've hooked last time i was doing this just to get a bit of practice before doing this video um i caught a couple of two kilo pike and trust me let's compare a two kilo pike to a two kilo bream there is no comparison because pike fight like crazy you think you've hooked into a whale and then it turns out it's a one kilo pike they are really fun on this light gear setup and spinning is and the same with big perch as well they both really really fight so it's worth giving spinning a go and also it helps to level up even if you don't plan to do spinning long term it's worth getting a setup of each float 
spinning and feeder and just rotate a little bit because once you start if you keep catching the same fish with the same method you get less experience so changing it up for a bit going okay i'm gonna fit i'm gonna um, while it's light i'm gonna i'm gonna go and feed a fish for a bit or i'm gonna go and spin fish for a bit or something like this and it's really really useful um so like this for, for this spot here normally is a lot better than this i could normally catch a few pike by now but um it's not fishing as well what we could do is obviously we've tr tried two spinners that are different shades but they are the same sort of basic shape they're just different colors so let's go for our old favorite the old dragonfly <clears throat> There we go, we're casting out, we'll go this way, just to bring it through these grasses a little bit more. Like I said, always at an angle, always keep the rod tip. There we go. See what I mean? I didn't strike or anything, I just hooked it up. And there we go, nice little perch, little 300 gram perch. The old dragonfly never lets me down, mate. Never lets me down, buddies. Um, another thing, another quick question I get asked, I'll, I'll cover that at float fishing actually. There we go, straight in again. Straight in again. And because, a lot of the time, because you are reeling in all the time, you're almost striking anyway, because as soon as the fish gets on the line, you're reeling in, so therefore you're sort of setting the hook. I have found no need to do a big strike and, and you know, pull, like catapult the fish to the bank behind you or anything like that. Again, they were, the dragonfly boys, it's the future of fishing, I'm telling you. <laughs> they may not be big, but this is really nice. Um, there is other methods of spinning and you can like i said you can tr try changing the retrieval speed try going down to five try going up to 15 20. there is another method that people like to use and we're going to double the retrieval speed but what we're going to do is it's almost like a stop and go so we're sitting here we reel in as you can see you can see the guy holding the reel right so his thumbs on the on the handle so we're going to do one rotation and stop for a couple of seconds one rotation, stop for a couple of seconds. And, and continue that. You've got a nice flow there. You've got a nice flow. So it, it's jigging the bait about all over. As you get further on in the game and start doing spoons, there is actually like different jigging methods and all this sort of stuff. But like I said, I'll get more of an expert to cover that for you. But for me personally, I have found that retrieval speed 10, steady, controlled reeling in seems to do the trick and as you've seen i've hooked a bunch of fish already so you know just in this little thing we've got a six perch i'm surprised we've got no pike i, I want to catch a pike lads, before we finish up let's let's we're gonna go for a couple more casts but it's as simple as that i think the problem is that once you've like i said earlier you, once you're doing the feeder fishing and you're just you cast out your feeder you found a good spot you cast out your feeder with a with the worm on it and you put your little bell on the end and you can sit there and when it when the bell rings you have a fish oh it's a tiny little pike boys <laughs> there you go that wasn't much of a fight it's only a half kilo remember we've got 11 pound lined on here so it's not too bad but when, if you hook a two kilo even on this setup you're gonna know about it um but it's 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 you will catch fish slower especially initially as you're just getting to grips with the whole thing um so once you like i said once you learn float fishing you it's kind of you know you get the grips with it when to strike and all that sort of stuff and i think that's what people struggle with because they're going I'm not getting as many bites on the on the spinner not all fishing types are equal you know but when you're float fishing it's very un oh there's i've got actually a little fish i didn't even realize uh, 101 grams um you know you're not going to catch a two kilo pike when you're float fishing and you they are trust me they are worth fishing for to get some good bites on this light tackle um but let's 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 finish up here and there's just a couple of other things i want to cover before we finish up oh that oh my fucking hell my stomach went a bit then i wasn't even concentrating he went right up to it and he almost took it right okay so let's i'm scared now let's go to a float rod um a couple of little bits that i get asked a lot about float fishing this is a bollard naze rod. So you start off with the little um, telestick, tele which is no reel. You flick it out. There's nothing more you can do with it. You know, you can only cast a certain distance. But the first float rod you get opened up is the, um, the one of the bollard naze rods. So this is it, the bolos, okay, which is a really long rod, but it has a reel. And you set it up like you would. Um, I'm not saying this is the best setup for this because... 
Um, this is actually from my other account when I was first new and I just got bought this and went, okay. But it's the same deal. You can probably go for that same line, the, the Surtees, perfectly good. The same, we have the same line here as we did. A float of your choice. Some of the floats are just impossible to see, especially for an old man like me. So this is our basic setup. Got a float. You don't, we don't need a leader because obviously we're float fishing. We're not looking for big, scary pike that are gonna eat our line. <clears throat> but this you cast like you would a feeder rod, so, and it goes a distance. Look, if I if I go full beans, see, we have cast out quite a way. So I've got a really nice float on. This float is my favorite express fishing Bob, Bob Lamp. Um, express fishing Bob or express fishing Bob is the name of the guy Bob Lamp or is it because it's glowing? What, on here, on your skill points on float fishing, you'll unlock just before the bolognese rod, you'll unlock luminous float. You don't need to put a point into it, but it is so good. It glows in the dark, but even in the daytime, I find it a lot easier to see. Now, here's the thing with this float fishing when you're on this, right? What you, the clinical thing is, at the moment, there's too much slack line, right? It's gonna be hard for me to, if I strike, to make connection with the float because there's so much line here. like. Look how much I'm moving this thing, and I'm not moving the float, right? So what you need to do is whenever you cast out with a bolo rod, or any float fishing rod, later on it be match rods, which are shorter, more classical match rods, is cast it out, close your bail arm, and then just reel in, reel in, reel in, reel in all that slack line until you have this point here where it's like straight down. But you do also don't want this because what you're doing, you're connected to the float directly. So any small movement here, you're moving the float, you're scaring the fish. What you need, giant moth, what you need is just a little bit of slack line. There you go, this is perfect. This is just a little loop in the line, meaning we're not wobbling the float. And there's two ways to strike if you get a bite. There's the right click method, which is, which is the classic strike, um, or, um, so we zoom in, just move, pull it in a little bit and then go back and we've got a bit of slack line. My preferred method is to manually do it. So I get a bite here and I go, I'm just moving the mouse. There we go, bosh, like that. You know, I'm striking myself because then I kind of have more control over this. I know if there's a bit too much line out here that I, if I strike now, I need to sort of go like that, you see, because there's so much slack line. Whereas this only has a set distance that it can go. but. Try both out yourself, but the, the key bit is make sure you are connected to the float without too much slack line, but also not directly attached. One last thing I want to say that, that I get asked a lot, I didn't even consider when I was doing my guide, is that people are used to reeling in their rods. And let's say I want to recast this. You reel in your rod and it goes all the way up to the tip. Okay, I'm going to press B because I want to change bait. I'm going to stick a little red worm on there, a cast out. When you've got a fish on, the game doesn't let you reel in all the way, right? Because if you reeled in all the way with a little roach, all you'd be doing is like hanging off a roach off the end of your rod tip. It, it reels in, keep reeling in until it, it's you can't anymore. And then it's at the right length that you hold right, right mouse button when you've got a fish on and it swings the fish into you so you catch it and that's job done. If it was at the top, you wouldn't be able to grab it. Um, so that's just a sort of newbie tip for you. Also, um, the landing net is interesting. It, it, it's not great in this game, I've got to say, the landing net. It, it's a bit weird. So um, let's reel it in. What you need to do when you're fishing with the landing net is that get reel in until you can reel in no more, like we were speaking about just before. You've got the fish on. Let's say that's the maximum I can reel in because of this fish is on. And then hold the right mouse button, which will slowly sort of pull up your rod and the fish starts coming towards you. Once you've reeled in all the way you can, start swinging it in with the right mouse button and then hit space bar. Keep holding in the right mouse button so it's rising in and then it'll automatically sort of push the, the, the um, landing net into the water and then you, as it slides over, job done. If you don't reel in all the way and the fish is still too far out, you can, if once you bring out your, you've only got two hands, right? Well, so once you bring out your landing net, I can't, it says hand occupied in the bottom right. I can't reel in anymore. So you make, so you don't want to be doing that. You only want to do that when you've reeled in enough that you can sort of pull the fish in. 
Um, and also, if you if this is before you've able to afford a landing net and you've hooked onto a big fish and you physically can't because your rod's not great, sort of swing the fish in. What you want to do, and this is this is a little bit of a technique thing that might take you a little bit of time. I don't know, I'm swinging rod, I'm going to get snagged there. Um, is let's say I'm here, I'm on the edge of the water, and I'm struggling to bring this fish in all the way. Is very slowly, sort of stutter step backwards. Hold the rod tip up, and just press S to walk backwards. Just tap it, just tap it, just tap it. Right until we get to sort of back a little bit, and then hold the right mouse button up to sort of bring the fish in as close as possible. Beach it on this water so it comes on to land and then just run forward over the top of it and you'll automatically um, pick it up and it'll be sort of it's a lot easier sometimes when you hit, when you don't have a landing net and the big fish you can't just swing it in so that's a sort of way of beaching it and stuff like that so there we go my friends we are done for our sort of mini series of guides what i plan to do next is um i'm going to do a lake guide for mosquito i'm going to show you all the baits that i prefer and the types of fishing, where, where to catch the fish, all the good spots on the lake, all the secret spots. There's not really many secret spots on this. It's a big round lake, really, isn't it, really? So, um, but I'll show you all the different methods and where I catch the fish and everything like that. Um, I'm going to do the same with Old Berg and Winding Rivulet and all the different sort of places working up as well. Um, but also, if you are new to the game, the best place to, thing to do is press, once you join the game, press Q, press this little cog, go down it's, there's all these 500 channels, Go down to the L's, find me. We've got 400 people in our chat now. It's the largest community on the whole of the game, right? That's not the Russian servers. It's, this is the largest community. Um, look, look, even Russian fishing, Spanish, the whole of Spain, half the people. What's going on? Just smashing it. Because, and the reason why you want to join this is, you know, we want to chat to you and we get to see all your fish and everything. But if you've got any newbie questions, we've got a bunch of really good people in here that help out people constantly. Even if you think if you've got a stupid question, we've had a ton of stupid questions. It's fine. We've all had those stupid questions when we first started fishing. So jump in the chat. Ask away. There'll always be somebody on. We've, so many people are addicted to this game. It's great fun. So there we go, my friends. We are done with our sort of mini beginner's guide. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this helpful in any way, please do leave a comment. Please do leave a like because it helps the video get found. Subscribe to the channel because we're going to do a bunch more as well as the sort of lake guides and stuff that I'm going to be doing. I'm also going to be doing some fishing highlights videos, some of my big catches. I just won a big match recently, an official match. So I was quite pleased with that. 100 kilos of fish in 24 hours in game. Yeah, yeah, I'm just that good. Right, thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.